This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And here we are one more time to study the Word of God. Hallelujah. Praise His name. And to uh, research another chapter of the Bible. Today we're going to deal with Revelation chapter 10. We're going to do the entire chapter because it is one of the more abstract chapters in the, in the book. And that's, uh, that's being kind. Okay, the description is strange, but we're going to go ahead, excuse me, ah, mm. we're going to go ahead and try to get through it and see if we can make any sense out of it. Now, it starts off, yet another angel came down from heaven wearing a cloud with a rainbow over his head and his face was as bright as the sun and his legs were like pillars of fire and in his hand there was a small book and opened, and his right foot stood on the sea, while his left foot stood on the land. And he cried out with a loud voice like when a lion roars. And when he did that, seven thunders replied. When I went to write down what was said, a voice from heaven came out and told me, Do not reveal what has been spoken by the angel or the thunders. So I didn't. Then that angel who stood on the sea and the earth reached up toward heaven and swore by God, these were the last days and there would be no more. And in these final days when that angel has spoken, all the prophecies of God will be finished, just as he promised to his prophets. The voice from heaven told me, go to the angel, take the small book from his hand and eat it. It'll be sweet in your mouth but it will turn your stomach bitter. And so I ate it. And exactly what happened, it was just sweet as honey in my mouth, but as soon as it reached my stomach, it turned my whole body bitter. And then he said, you're still going to prophecy before kings and leaders and all the nations of the earth. So be ready. Okay, so... Didn't get to the seventh angel yet. <clears throat> it appears to me the seventh angel has a herald. And that herald is gathering up these four winds. And all these voices are being shouted. But we don't get to hear what they are. Huh. But we are promised that this is the end. These are the end days. The angel himself is kind of interesting to think about. I mean, he's descending, he's dressed in a cloud, he has a face like the sun, he has a rainbow over his head, and he has pillars of fire for his feet and legs. So, <clears throat> to think about that, the appearance of that could be a lot of things. And I'm not going to speculate exactly what, but in the... Uh, Various sci-fi communities I've belonged to in the past, and still do, uh, trekkers, such. Um, this would be almost described as some sort of a rocket moving or something pushing up forward through. Except this is descending. So, not quite what we would think. But, certainly bears to mind, remember, the one thing that I always think about here is that John is attempting to translate what he sees to something that people can understand. And a lot of this stuff, there's just no translation. There's just nothing to, nothing to suggest what he is seeing. It is heavenly. It is uh, far beyond any human comprehension. We can't even comprehend the form of God, so how are we supposed to comprehend what John's seeing here? Yet, he's doing it. So, we have to get back again oh, to the main focus of, this, of the uh, series, for the focus of what I've written. Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, this, you know, John's Gospel in video, uh, the Book of Acts in writing, uh, all of the various things that I've written so far, the studies of the New Testament. And remember that the purpose of this is to understand what it is to be a Christian. What 
is the meaning behind the book, the faith, the Savior. It's simply this, to live your life as a witness to the Holy Spirit. To live your life as a witness to the glory of God. How do you do that? Real simply. We get back to this every time, don't we? But it's true. And I know, you know, some of these actually say, well, Fred, you just say the same thing over and over again. I say, yeah. Yeah. It, it, this is not rocket science. This is not complicated. This is not something that we needed a computer to figure out, folks. You want to get along with your fellow man. You want to really get along. I'm not talking about that government and those people and those people over here. That's not how you think about your life. You walk down the street, you don't run to those people. You run into your neighbors, you run into your friends, you run into people that you work around or work with. This is how we treat these people. This is how we witness our faith to them. That's the only witness you're asked to give. You're not asked to get up on television or a movie screen and give a witness to millions. Some people are called to that. Billy Graham seems to have done that just fine. I guess the Lord thought his witness was, was worth pushing out there. I thought that he wanted to get the word out. And God seemed to approve. Okay, that's great. What about you and me? Millions of millions, millions of Christians out there with only one mission. And that is to witness our lives to Christ. And we do that by love without condition, forgiveness without limitation, and judge no one. Are they simple? Yeah. Are they straightforward? Yep. There is no mystery to the way God wants you to live your witness to Jesus Christ. Mystery of God? Who God is, how he came to be, how did he do all this creating? Okay, good. That's a good mystery. Let's worry about that later. Right now, let's witness our lives to Christ. You want peace on this earth? You want peace in your neighborhood? You want peace in your community? Do you want a place where your children can grow up in peace and harmony with others? Where they can grow up without fear? Where they can grow up with hate? where they can grow up without prejudice. Witness to Christ. Be the witness. Be the example. Live your life just as simple and beautiful as you can. Be that witness. And if you do, I guarantee you, the Holy Spirit will be with you. Because when you're partaking the Spirit with you every day, the Holy Spirit will be the one that steps in when a situation arises and says, this is how you handle it, and you do it that way. And the witness will be to Jesus Christ and his glory. And others will see that witness and they will say, wow, what does he have that I don't have? What does she have that I don't have? What do they have that I don't have? Now that is evangelism at its root. That is evangelism at its finest. That is how you become an evangelist. Not by standing on a corner and hitting people in the head with a Bible. Not by standing on a corner and shouting how everybody should be repentant and sin. That's for prophets. And unless God has tapped you on the shoulder and said, you're a prophet, you're not. So, how do you witness to Jesus Christ? It's very simple. You live your life by the standards that he lived his life by. That's a Christian. Lord, we thank you so much for this time together. We thank you so much for this time to share your word and for the glory of your name, of your word, of your Lord, of your Savior, of all the things that you have given us to give us freely with no merit for all the things we could not earn. And in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is a real simple ministry of peace. That's all it is. I don't want to reform the world. I want to encourage 
each of you to form it yourselves. You have a great, blessed day. Peace be with you. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine.